Introduction to Asterisk Objectives. By the end of this chapter, you should be able to describe what Asterisk is, understand the Asterisk ecosystem, select a hardware or software for your project, understand the Asterisk architecture, find common user scenarios, find documentation and information. So, what is it? What is, what is Asterisk? Asterisk is a PBX implemented as an open source. It was originally created by Mark Spencer in 1999. Asterisk actually started as a PBX. Uh, I think Mark in, in, the, in the 90s was looking for a, at least is the story that it's told, it's Mark was looking for a PBX and when he, for his Linux company, it was a tech support Linux company, similar to many of the, the ones we have in these days, um, and Mark was upset because of the pricing and the complication of the the current PBXs that the PBXs at that time, and he decided to start uh, an open source PBX, a uh, uh, soft PBX. Uh, as any other PBX, it allows you to connect phones and make calls. And with the passage of time, Asterisk has become a major telephony platform for applications such as dialers, call centers, interactive voice response, soft switches. The imagination is, is a limit. Uh, the thing is, it started as a PBX, but right now I would say that nine on each 10 call centers in Brazil use Asterisk. Uh, banks, but many big companies are using open source platforms because this reduces their cost, reduces their maintenance, reduces the total cost of ownership. Uh, many people would say, many manufacturers will say, no, it, it doesn't, but yes, it, it actually uh, reduces the uh, reduces the total cost. I remember one, one of my clients, there, there was a tri tribunal, and it's a court. They have 130 uh, facilities over our state and they decided to put a, a PBX on each of these facilities. And the cost of uh, hardware maintenance decreased a lot because now they, the only thing they had to maintain were, were PCs and not uh, proprietary PBXs. So Asterisk, when Asterisk came in 2000, actually came here in 2003, 2004, then when it started to become, became, started to become popular, uh, it was really uh, disruptive. Um, I would like to to in the ec to explain a bit about the ecosystem. We have the asterisk.org, that is the open source project. We have Gigin, that is the Marx Marx company. It's now a huge company. It develops some uh, proprietary soft uh, switches based on asterisk, like the Switchbox. It's an excellent. If you want to go proprietary, it's, a, it's an excellent one. And they are the main responsibles for the project. And there's, there's one guy also called Jim Dixon. Jim Dixon developed this product called the ZapataTelephony.org. That, that was actually what brought my attention first. I remember in 2003 or 2004, we were working in a project to connect four E1s, 120 lines between two major cities here. And my my but my price was eighty thousand dollars using a pair of Cisco gateways, and one guy with Asterisk appeared with this card, the the Zapata, the Tormenta card. It was a four E one card, and the cost was fifteen hundred dollars each. So their total cost for the project was ten times lower than what I was offering. And obviously, at that time, the uh, asterisk was still new. Many people had some fear, some uncertainty and doubt, and manufacturers used to push this the fund to, to the users. But it was a major breakthrough. It was completely disruptive. So the prices with audio code, Cisco, and Dialog at that time were, were around $10,000 per, per E1, T1 card, or nine to eleven thousand dollars per card and a tormenta card was 41 per uh, 1500 so it, it's completely disruptive when you when you have something like this 
it changes the it changes the market. So Zapata Telephony was really disruptive, and Digim was one of the first companies to produce this card commercially. And not only the card was disruptive, we were paying a lot of money for recording. We were paying a lot of money for IVRs. We were paying a lot of money uh, to to many applications that are that were present on Asterisk. At that time, I was working with a call center. And I remember our budgets for recording was about ten thousand dollars per line. Uh, no, sorry, a thousand dollars per line uh, for recording, a thousand dollars per line, or even more for for an IVR port. So, asterisk also was really disruptive on on this area, and the effect of the open source telephony asterisk and everything that came uh, came after this was really uh, how can I say terrible for for the incumbents like companies such as Nortel and Avaya and Siemens all of them suffer with the lower prices that Asterisk, Asterisk was bringing in the market. Asterisk was really the pioneering company on open source telephony. Why? Why we moved to Asterisk PBX? We were working with Cisco in 2003-2004. We moved to, to Asterisk PBX but two two reasons. The first, the price, it uh, the cost was a lot lower, and it was easier to to close projects using using asterisk. The second thing is open standards. That's another that was another problem. I remember I want to to sell this type of solution. Uh, I used to hear from manufacturers, ah, oh, you're not certified to sell the solution. You need to train many people to to sell the solution. We have this licensing that you have to put in a configurator and to just to choose what you have to buy and if we allow you we will allow you to buy our solution that was the what what uh, this is what was happening at that time and it still happens now manufacturers say hey to sell my solution you have to invest a lot of money licensing asterisk is licensed um, as a gpl version 2 but if you want there's also a commercial license there is a URL where you can see the types of license that you have. Which harder to use? You have a, to connect to a phone company, you need a standard PC, any server would go. Uh, Asterisk does not demand a lot of hardware. A four gig RAM uh, server usually is more than enough. Uh, to connect to the phone company, you need to ISDN or analog line, so you need a card, a PCI card on the server to connect those phone companies. Uh, some of these cards are also USB, Zorcom provides USB interfaces, and there are other companies that provide Ethernet cards that can connect to the phone company. Right. Uh, the other way to connect is using a SIP, that is a protocol connected to internet telephony service provider, and actually I believe all of the telcos in these days are providing SIP trunks uh, actually, it doesn't make sense to use a uh, technology that was developed on the 60s. T1s are were developed and started on the AT&T in the 60s. So it's a very old technology and it's expensive. You have you need to, to buy a, a card for your server if you want to connect the phone company. But still, in many countries, there's this is still the the only way to to connect. But in most countries now, we have uh sip trunks sometimes cpi trunks and cpi has some additional information uh, in the isoop in the user part of the isdn and uh, but sip is the most economical way to connect to the internet you don't need anything even a virtual machine will connect to the internet and make calls right so we'll connect to the provider and sip has something that it's much more flexible than anyone you can go from one line to four thousand lines in a circuit and with with T1s, you have 23 lines. It's always from 23 to 23. If you have a large call center with 4,000 simultaneous calls, uh, a SIP trunk can reduce uh, one or two racks full of equipment uh, easily. All of these things are connected to a Ethernet switch, a simple Ethernet switch, and then you can have IP phones. IP phones are extremely cheap this, this times. We were paying about something close to $30 Thirty-five dollars, and sometimes even less for IP phone. So it doesn't make sense now to use other types of of connection in the in the company.
soft phones you can also have soft phone usually i don't use a soft phone as a, a our main phone some companies try it but usually it's 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 weird because not always you have a, a headset and for call centers sometimes it makes sense but soft phones if you if your pc is overloaded it will cause uh, audio issues too and also analog telephone adapters where you put it analog the one of the most famous is the pep2 from linksys and these days you have some from grandstream and some other manufacturers where you can connect analog phones to the box it's it's very common on the residential market there are people that are still using and actually phone, uh, cable companies and and FTT, FTTA, fiber to the home companies are also using ATAs uh, embedded in their ONU and the, their optical network units or in the MTA. Which software to use? Um, there is Asterisk, the, the one we are going to use on this training. We install the server and then we install the software. There's Asterisk now where you install a distro and this distro will install Asterisk, this operating system, Asterisk, and actually Asterisk now also installs now the FreePDX. You can also have the FreePDX distro from Sangoma that bought Schmooze some, some years ago. And in Latin America, it's very common to use Isabel. Isabel actually is a fork of the famous Elastix uh, project. Elastix was bought by 3CX and FreeCX kind of closed, uh, closed the source of the project and then people forked the, the source code from Elastix on Isabel and they, they are now providing support and updates to the, for the community. Asterisk versions. Uh, it's interesting to go to this page on the, on the internet The keys, these are the, these are the versions of Asterisk. So we have 1.2, that is one of the oldest ones. The end of life was in 2010, 1.4 in 2012. So the oldest version we have now that it's current, there's a still, uh, it's not end of life, is the 13.x, this is a long, long-term, uh, long-term solution long-term support 14 is a standard 15 is a standard so the light the version that we are going to use is a standard version so in 2019 it will be discontinued and 16 will be the next lts lts license i would love to start the string with 16 but 16 will be released only on october so for now for this training i will present the the version 15.